up to here with the sins of mankind. We are being very, very naughty all over the world. God is being extremely patient, but as comes the moment when his patience is, patience is going to come to an end. And then, watch out. In the meantime, a difficult situation, and we, we do the best we can. You've organized the basement here. It's plenty of space, and it's a very attractive altar, well set up. So the best is not bad. And of course, if we have the faith here, we could be in much worse surroundings, and the faith would still be the most important. You may remember the great hero of the Catholic Church in the 300s, quite soon after our Lord, uh, St. Athanasius, who said when he was kicked out of his church, and he was kicked out five times from the, being the Bishop of Alexandria, he, they, they, the bad guys didn't like him. He was kicked out five times, and uh, he said, because the Arian heresy was taking over Catholics and he was taking over the churches, but it was a heresy. And he said, they have, the, they have the buildings, but we have the faith. By the grace of God, you and I have the faith. And, and it is a grace. It is a gift of God. It's not our own virtue, or our, our own uh, abilities, our own natural efforts which give us the faith. It's a gift of God. And then, of course, you, some of you were not born and bred in the Society of Bicentre, and you needed to move f once already from the mainstream church to the Society of Bicentre, and then recently you wouldn't be here unless you had made another move from the Society to a greater or lesser extent to what we're now calling the resistance, the resistance movement. So if you firstly see the need to be Catholics, that's a great gift of God. It's a gift he doesn't seem to give to many people. The Catholics are not a majority in the world. And then if, you, if amongst the Catholics you saw the need to follow Archbishop Lefebvre rather than Pope John Paul VI or Pope John Paul II, that was another great grace, make no mistake, because the Archbishop was keeping the faith while Paul VI was keeping the buildings. But Paul VI was changing the faith, he was changing the religion. And all of the conciliar popes, John XXIII, Paul VI, John Paul I, John Paul II, Benedict XVI, and now Francis, all of them have been changing the religion, the Catholic religion, into what we might call the conciliar religion. The difference between the two is very simple. The Catholic religion centers on God. The conciliar religion, which is, centers on man. It's the religion of man as opposed to the religion of God. Because at the Second Vatican Council, the bishops all said, we have got to change the Catholic religion to fit modern man. Modern man is different from anything he's ever been, and the Catholic religion no longer fits him Therefore, the Catholic, no, we, we don't need to change modern man. We've got to change the Catholic religion. That was Vatican II. The heroic Archbishop Lefebvre stood against that. He said, you can't, God is God and he doesn't change. God's religion is God's religion and it doesn't change. God invented it and not men. God, in, God is the master of the Catholic religion. He is the, the center of the Catholic religion. It can't be changed. That's what Archbishop Lefebvre said. And all the other bishops disagreed with him, and the popes disagreed with him. What could he do? He stood by the faith. He said, it's more important to please God than to please men. And so even though the pope was the pope, and Archbishop Lefebvre never said that Paul VI or John Paul II weren't popes, but he, he said, even if they are the popes, I can't obey them when they're going against God. It is better to obey God than to obey men. And therefore he took his stand, and by a miracle of grace, he succeeded in building the Society of Pius X. 
That was in from 1970 through to the consecration of four bishops in 1988. Some of you would remember that event, although it's now 17 years in the past. 17 or 27? 27 years in the past. I don't remember. 88, 98, 28, 20, yes, 27 years past. It's a quarter of a century ago already. Uh, he consecrated bishops in order to guarantee the survival of the faith. Because since they changed the religion, they were changing the faith. The old faith was not going to survive unless some bishop took a stand. Archbishop then took a stand and he made four bishops who also took a stand for the truth, for the true faith, for the true God against a bastard religion put together by men uh, in uh, married, men trying to marry the, marry the church to the modern world, which is a, an adulterous religion. The Old Testament uses that language. The, 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 the union of the people of God with the world, and it was already happening in the Old Testament, is an adulterous union. And the children, the results of that union, are then bastards. He used, that's the language the Archbishop used, it was very strong language, striking language, but the change of religion is a strong and striking thing. The falling away of the mass of Catholic layfolk, bishops and priests, and the popes from the true religion, they're falling away from the true religion, is a terrible thing, and it calls for some terrible language. For 20 years, while the Archbishop was alive, the, the society flourished. But as was to be expected, as it often happens with congregations, with Catholic congregations, when the founder dies, there's a question whether the successors are going to be faith, will know how to be faithful or not. Sometimes in the Catholic Church, the successors have been faithful, and the congregation has lasted for centuries, like the Dominicans or the Franciscans, or the Jesuits. But sometimes the, 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 the successors are not faithful to the fathers, and the successors to Archbishop Lefebvre have not been faithful to them. They have, under the pressure and the influence, under the pressure and the influence of the whole conciliar church and of the whole modern world, they have given way and they are sliding with the world and sliding with the false new church. And so just as the Vatican II made the church into a, into a new church, which can be spelled as, spelt as which can be spelt as one word, N E W C H U R C H, the same way the the present leaders of the Society of Saint are making the society into a new society, spelt as one word, N E W S O C I E T Y, and the the the, the, the situation is exactly parallel. It's for the same reasons to please the modern world, to please modern man. Actually, in the case of the society, it's in order to please the conciliar church. So if we say that the conciliar church is a mix half the world and half the Catholic church, and if we say then that tradition mixing with the conciliar church is two parts Catholic, mixing with one part Catholic, one part of the world, that still makes one quarter of the world and three quarters Catholic. That's still not Catholic. That's not Catholic. Catholic is 100% Catholic or it isn't Catholic. Catholic Catholicism is all or nothing. And what the society is now doing is trying to mix with the conciliar church. In other words, let's say, three quarters Catholic, but one quarter of the world, that's too, one quarter too much, one quarter too many. And therefore, the, we can't follow the society the way the society is going. We might still attend the Mass, that depends upon whether, what, my, what, I, what I need to keep the faith. If to keep the faith, I need to attend the society Masses still, well, 
because I, because I need the sacraments. Well, if that's what I need, I make that judgment, I make that decision. But as the Archbishop said, if that's the decision you make, watch out. Watch out because the English, at the time of the Reformation, they lost the faith. England lost the faith by the Catholics going along with the change of religion brought in by Cranmer and the others. Therefore, if you go along with the society today, be careful. Be, the, the lifeboat is sinking as well. The Titanic is sinking. That's the mainstream church. The lifeboat is now also sinking. You stay on the lifeboat because you don't yet want to jump into the ocean. Well, be careful because the lifeboat is also sinking. Or it's being driven back to, it's being motored back towards the Titanic and they want to tie the lifeboat to the sinking Titanic so that the Titanic will pull the lifeboat down with it to the bottom of the ocean, five miles deep. Falling away from the faith, falling away from the truth, abandoning our Lord. Can't do it. So you might say, I need, the, I need the sacraments in order to keep the faith. Well, if you really do need them to keep the faith, not every society mass is rotten, you might still go. On the other hand, you may well say, I can't go to society masses any longer. I'm aware of what game they're playing. I know what game they're playing. I know that the lifeboat is sinking, being made to sink, or being made to get tied back to the Titanic, the sinking Titanic. I don't want, I can't do that. Cost what it may, I'm going to jump into the ocean. And I'll find a raft. I won't find another lifeboat yet, but I may find a raft. The resistance movement is a raft, and with the, with the help of God, I'm going to keep the faith. The resistance is not, certainly not yet, abandoning the faith. Why do I say not yet? Because, my dear friends, the modern world is terrible. And the modern world has sunk the mainstream church, is sinking the mainstream church. The modern, church, the modern world is sinking the archbishop's lifeboat. You and I make a raft, maybe. The modern world will come after us, and it may sink that as well. It would be normal in this terrible modern world, this terrible abnormal modern world, it would be normal for us to go the way of all flesh and to finish the same way. Our Lord said about the end of the world, if these days weren't shortened, the sufferings of Catholics would be so terrible at the end of the world, if these days weren't shortened, even the elect, if it were possible, would not be saved. That's how serious it is. It's immensely serious. And therefore, let none of us, St. Paul says, let anybody who's still on his feet watch out lest he fall. We stat vidiet ne cadat in Latin. He who stands, let him watch out lest he fall. You and I think that you and I are now standing on our feet because we've seen we've got to get clear of the, of, of the mainstream church. We've also got to get clear of the, of the Archbishop's lifeboat because it's, it's, it's got some bad captains running it now. If you and I see that, it's a grace. God can always take away his grace. You and I can always lose the grace. And therefore, you and I need to watch out. What our Lord says in the Garden of Gethsemane is watch and pray. Watch and pray. And I say, I take that a little further, I say, watch and pray, watch and pray, 15 mysteries every day. Uh, the rosary, the rosary is, is, you may lose the mass, or your mass is already fairly rare, only once every six or eight weeks. You may lose the mass, you may lose your priests. We may all get cut off, carted off to Alaska or Siberia or who knows what. Or we may get assassinated, killed, shut up in a detention center, a, deten yeah, a detention camp. It's perfectly possible. But they won't be able to take the rosary away from you. To take the rosary away from you, they have to cut off your five fingers on each hand. Otherwise, so long as you've got ten fingers, you can pray the rosary. And that's what you may have to do. It may come to that. We don't know the future. We don't know how soon God is going to step in to save things. We don't know what's going to happen between now and when God steps in. But it doesn't, at this moment, it doesn't look good. In California, 
they've just voted a law that insane. They're insane. But not only in California. They've just voted a law that if your children don't get vaccinated, they won't be able to go to school. If they don't go to school, then the social services can always come in and take the children, yank the children from your home. That's how bad it's getting. The law about the children having to go to school is already there. The law about vaccinations has just been added. The, the New World Order, the bad guys, are in control and they don't like Catholics. And they don't, they don't mind soft, weak Catholics who won't stand up to them. But Catholics who say the faith comes first and God comes first. The New World Order cannot stand people who say God comes first. Because they come first. In their idea, man comes first. They come first. And they don't want anybody standing up for God against them. And that's why they're going to come after anybody. Even the fundamentalist Protestants who stand for God. At least stand for God. And stand because of their stand for God will stand against the New World Order. The corruption going on today. No, no, no. The New World Order, the bad guys absolutely want badness to triumph and they want goodness to stop, and they want no more of the real, of real Catholics. Therefore the world is in a terrible mess. None of us know how it's going to work out. So this is the world in which the children have to be confirmed, are to be confirmed. It's a great grace because confirmation is exactly the sacrament of strength, firmness, confirmation, firmness, firmness in the faith, strength in the faith. And heaven knows if today we need strength in the faith. And therefore, the sacrament, when the bishop, the bishop marks the forehead with holy chrism on the, uh, with the words, uh, John, Janet, uh, I sign you with the sign of the cross, and I confirm or strengthen you with the chrism of salvation. When the bishop says those words and anoints the forehead with the oil, grace from God comes into the soul and stamps the soul. Soldier of Christ. There's a stamp. Just like you stamp goods or stamp papers, you, the soul, we can't see the soul, it's invisible. You can't see the stamp, but there it is. Soldier of Christ. The girls will not be manly soldiers, they will be feminine soldiers. It's not the same thing, but they will still be soldiers. They will still have to fight the good fight of the faith for Jesus Christ against the wicked world, against wickedness in high places, against bad churchmen, and against bad leaders of the society of Pius X. Where a number of good priests are sliding little by little by little, under this terrible pressure from above, at the, from the top of the society, the diabolical leaders of the society, who are pushing, pushing, pushing good priests away from God and towards the Second Vatican Council, towards the apostate Romans, the faithless Romans, the untrue Romans. Maybe some of the Roman officials mean well, maybe they think they're doing what serves God, but in reality, they are seriously disserving or unserving or counter-serving God. They're, they're making things easier for modern corrupt man. They're not, making, they're not serving God as they should. And therefore, the, the children or the adults being reconfirmed. They're reconfirmed not, not because confirmation can be given twice, but because in today's corrupt church, the first time they received it may not have been valid. Valid. It may, because of the change of the words, I sign you with the sign of the cross and I confirm you with the chrism of salvation. They may change the words or they may uh, change the oil. The holy chrism must be made out of olive oil. Now the new church is saying you can make it out of any oil you like. That's not the Catholic church. You can make it out of peanut oil or any vegetable oil. The old church said it must be olive oil. So it's not certain that the new, that the sacrament as you received it was valid in the new church. 
And that's why if it wasn't valid, and then you get reconfirmation, the second time it will be valid. If it was valid the first time, the second time is nothing. So the, the, conf the, the sacrament can only be given once. The only once it would be valid. If once the stamp is on the soul, soldier of Christ, it doesn't need to be re-stamped. It can't be re-stamped. But if you're not certain whether it was stamped the first time, you re receive it a second time in order to make sure that the stamp is there. Because the stamp is a protection. It's a, pr it's a strength. Many Catholics don't realize that they have that strength. If they've received the sacrament, they have that strength. It's always there. Just like in marriage, if a marriage gets difficult, you can go in front of the Blessed Sacrament, well, he's not here, but wherever you can find the Blessed Sacrament, and you can show your marriage ring to our Lord. Our Lord, dear Lord, I need the grace of my marriage. Here is my marriage ring. I married with a ring. I married properly in the church. The marriage is being difficult. You, dear Lord, you must help me with the grace of marriage. You must revive the grace of marriage which I received when I married in the church. And say with the confirmation, when I'm being tortured, persecuted, pursued by the new world order, by the bad guys, then I'm tempted to to go, go get weak and fall away from the faith and abandon the faith, then I can say, I, don't, I can't show my ring, I can't show my marriage ring, but what I can do is say, Lord, I am stamped here with the sacrament of your confirmation, of your strength. Lord, I need this sacrament now. You must revive now in my breast the strength of the sacrament so that I will not abandon you or betray you. And this, the grace is there. If I've received the sacrament, the grace is there. And so, I should make use of the sacrament. Catholics have, who've received the sacrament have that strength. How many of them today are using that strength in order to resist a bad and wicked world, wick, more wicked day by day? Not enough. Many, 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 many Catholics are sliding away from our Lord. It is a little day by day, it's a little it's a little, a little, it's not sudden, it's not obvious, it's not clear, but they aren't the, the Catholics that they were two, five, ten years ago. And I'm afraid we're going to be able to say that of many priests in the society. It's very sad. After Vatican II, there were many priests that began by saying, I'm not going to lose the old faith, but they stayed within the, the new church, and within the new church, the influence little by little was to fall away and then after a while the, these good priests went along with the new religion and stopped trying to keep up the old religion. Very dangerous. So today my dear friends the sacrament of confession beforehand a number of you came to confession I'm afraid there wasn't but there wasn't time for everybody. Let me say a few words about, about confession. I find that quite often that husbands or, and or wives don't know the ABC of human nature, of the nature of man and the nature of woman, because today's wicked world is pretending that there's no real difference between men and women. But in scripture, St. Paul says, wives, obey, <laughs> obey your husband. <laughs> Husbands, love your wives. Very important. Why? Because women run on love. A car runs on gasoline. Woman runs on love. She's made to love and to be loved. She needs love. And she needs to love. That's the way women are. Men are not that way. Men run on ego. <laughs> <laughs> we are superior, or we think we are. And therefore, the, a clever wife does not confront her husband. She does not fight him. She does not crash into him. She does, may not even argue with him. She works around him, <laughs> and she always respects him. She will always respect her husband, and she will never be behave in such a way as to seem 
not to be respected. She may disagree with him, and she may easily be right. Woman's intuition is often right. But she's not going to crash into her husband because she knows she's right. Because if she crashes into his ego, it won't fly. It won't work. His if man's ego, he will stand and resist, just resist, just not to give way to his inferior wife, inferior in inverted commas, because we think we are superior. So don't crash into your husbands because it won't get what you want, not usually. And even if you get what you want, they won't love you. If you want to be loved, be lovable, wives. Be lovable, make yourselves lovable. Be gentle. Often what you won't get by crashing into your husband, you will get by gentleness and tenderness, which is what a man needs in his woman. Gentleness and tenderness. A man shouldn't be gentle or tender, or not necessarily. A man should be strong so that the wife can lean on him and the wife can depend upon him and the children can lean on him. And man is like the steak or the, 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 the and then the woman is like the tomato plant that climbs up the steak. Of a steak, a steak needs to be strong and it needs not to give way. A man must stand for something, not for crushing his wife. He must not crush his wife. The steak must not crush the tomato plant. The steak must allow the tomato plant to climb up. And then the tomato plant produces all the fruit, produces the children, produces the, the flower, produces the color, produces the gentleness, the tomato plant is gentle, the, t the steak is, is hard. Man and woman complement one another, they fulfill, they, they fill in the gaps one of another in the most marvelous way. That's how God designed it. And here comes the stupid modern world and says, man and woman are just the same. So if, if, if he wants respect, I too want respect. And modern woman gets proud and she gets hard and she loses her femininity, it's a disaster, both for the husband and for the children. Because the children don't have a tender or gentle mother. Not that mother should be soft and silly. She needs to be strong. The mother of God was extremely strong when our Lord needed her strength, when she was at the foot of the cross and he was undergoing horrible torture. Could he have done it without his mother being there to support him? By her femininity, by her motherliness, and by her strength, by her motherly strength, which is not the same as masculine strength. The sexes are very different, and it's very necessary to understand that. And usually, usually, the woman is more people smart than the man. Men are things smart, or ideas smart. Women are people smart. And therefore, when it comes to the relationship between the husband and the wife, it often depends upon the wife to work around her husband. It's not the husband who needs to work around his wife, although a clever husband will, or will do that. But it's for the man is to lead, and the woman is to follow. Today, pride, everybody's proud, the women are proud, they don't want to follow. They don't want the man to be the head of the home, and they don't want to be the heart of the home. And when the mother doesn't want to be the heart of the home, the home is heartless. It's cold. The children, there's something the children don't get in their home as, ch as, ch as children, which will, they will be lacking for the rest of their lives. The mother is the heart of the home. It's a, it's, she has an, an, an immense power as the heart of the home. A power over her husband if she uses her power cleverly. But if she tries crashing into him, it's not going to work. So, my dear friends, uh, do realize when you go to confession that the modern world has given you very possibly, it's, it, there are certain things it's never told you or never told you properly. In the old days, you would learn all of these things from your grandmother. Today, the grandmothers are pushed off into old folks' homes and they can't tell these things to the daughters that need it be able to run their home, to make a happy home. The happy home depends upon the mother to a huge extent. Also the father, but the mother is the heart of the home. And therefore, it's, a, it's the happiness of the mother will be the happiness of her husband and of her children. 
and she will wrap herself around her husband and she will make him happy. A uh, Russian proverb, a man without a wife is like a, man, a, a garden without a hedge. The hedge goes all around the garden and protects the garden. Or the yard, you would say, in, in the United States. Uh, like a yard without a fence. She's the, 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 wife, the good wife, wraps herself around her husband and protects him. Then the, another proverb, Russian, another Russian proverb, uh, the, 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 the husband, a husband without a wife is like a man out in January without a fur cap. Uh, the Russian winter is pretty savage. <coughs> you go out without a fur cap, you're in trouble. The, the man needs his, man, man needs one, he has, unless he has a priestly vocation, that's a different thing. But it, man needs, a man, most men will not grow up, they will not mature unless they marry. Marriage is, is, is tough. It's not a bed of roses, there's often thorns to go with the roses. But a man is not going to grow up until he marries, often. Similarly, a woman will be missing, a woman is usually lacking, unless she has a vocation or something like a vocation which is teaching and nursing. If she has a job of teaching and nursing, she can be motherly. And that's what a woman needs, is to mother. She's made to mother, she's made to give life. Men are made to slug one another and to even to kill and to take life. That's completely opposite. Putting women into the military is ridiculous. Making, trying to make women fight and trying to make women kill is ridiculous. So we're putting them into the police force so that they will go, they will, they, with also a pistol that there's, that's just so wrong. It's so wrong. Because that's not what women are made for. They're not designed for that. They're designed to, to nurture, to love, to, to, to give life, not to punish, to catch and punish, like a police. So, my dear friends, realize that uh, the modern world is very wrong, it's deeply wrong, and that's what the, the, new lead, the leaders of the new society don't see. They, they've never understood what the Archbishop was really doing. They've never understood how bad the modern world is. They think it's not really all that bad. Just like the, the Vatican II. They said, what, let, the church needs to go out and embrace the modern world. The modern world isn't so bad. It's not against the church. Complete error, deep error. The modern world is, has been molded by godless Freemasons, by enemies of God. The enemies of God have made this modern world that we live in. So it's not at all surprising that it's that it's opposed to the church and that it's had this influence upon the church so as to change the church and the influence now upon the society of Christ and as well. What, what's the answer? My friends, the, my, you may lose your priests. God bless the priests like Father Fyfe and Father Buco who are doing all they can to maintain your faith. But it's not easy. They're, they're over, overloaded, obviously. And... You may even look at the point may come where you where you where you lose your priests. I just said, so get get a firm hold on the rosary. If you, if it, if you are if in in the family, pray five mysteries every day, and maybe in the morning rather than in the evening. In the evening, people are tired. Maybe in the morning it might be better to start the day with five mysteries. All the family, dad leading, and mum and the children. And then the adults, it's easier than you think to pray 15 mysteries a day. Most children don't need 15 mysteries a day. It can be too much. You shouldn't overload religion on the children. Use your common sense. But they need to run around and play and so on. But the um, father and mother may be able to find the time. They may not be able to find the time to pray the extra 10 decades. But it's easier than one thinks, especially with the help of a finger rosary which just wraps around your finger, which you can pray anywhere, anytime, and it doesn't interfere with the stick shift when you're driving the car. It's easy with the, 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 the I'm sorry. Pray the rosary because then, my dear friends, you, you bring in the mother of God to help protect your families, to help you to see clear how bad the world is and how necessary it is to do what God wants, not changed, in order to get to God's heaven. If we change God's religion, we're not going to get to his heaven. And getting to his heaven is what it's all about. 
Pray the rosary, my dear friends, in order to enlist the help of the Mother of God and pray during this little ceremony of confirmation. Pray for the strength, the spiritual strength and the salvation of the souls being confirmed today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.